Right, so this is meant to be the final word where we go into and kind of reflect back on Burnley 5, Cardiff 0, the previous game, and we look on towards the next fixture. Well, clearly that's, that's not what we are really having to do here. Clearly it does seem that um, the thoughts and the concerns is onto much other pressing areas. I'm going to miss out on maybe a few things that's happened in the last 24 hours because, Jesus Christ, I can't keep up. Like, this is genuinely like tw like FIFA career mode football manager levels of transfer madness. How many, out how many outgoings? I don't know. How many incomings? I don't know. Like, how much of it is actually true? I don't know. All we can take is what we see on social media. So... Let's go through some positives. Burnley did win 5-0 at home to Cardiff City at the weekend. We did finally win a game at home after what was an absolute the embarrassment of a, of a campaign last year, especially away from home, only winning two games or campaign against Sheffield United and 10 men for 80 minutes Brentford. And even we, we made that look tough and almost drew to the end. So it was good to finally repay the fans. And... It looks like that game could be also an exercise in what we can only describe as emotional closure. As many players that was involved or bit part players, it looks like we may be having to say goodbye to. Now, we all kind of knew this was coming. We've got a massive squad, and as it currently stands, we've got five players over the current limit of how much you can actually register for the league. So, it all kind of makes sense of why a few players will go, it's just, you know, the important conversation is, who does go, and if they do go, do we get sufficiently paid for them, and I think that's a case with a good chunk of these, now the fact of the matter is, most of these, we don't even know how much we even are getting, because it's still such new information, and we may find out in two more days that half it was nonsense, and half of it is actually true, so, um, we can kind of look look back on Cardiff because that feels like it was like two weeks away now. Let's go into the chaos in the last 24 hours in the market. I put a list here of what I think I've seen and I, I'm sure I may miss things out, but what it looks like is potential outgoings, some are confirmed, some are just kind of rumours, and that is Amin Adakil, Vitinho, Manuel Benson, Luke McNally, Anna Saruri, Sanderberg, Dawa O'Shea, Masengo, and Trafford. Now, um, I mean, Adekiel looks like he's got some serious interest in Germany. Vitinho looks like he's got some serious interest, at least the bids from Brazil. I think Flamengo's a club involved. Benson has got Sunderland, but most importantly, Leeds interested in him. And McNally, I think, is just... I've, I've not seen which club, but probably generic championship clubs like Middlesbrough or something that may want him. And Asaruri, from what we are aware, is just kind of not really uh, seen like he's going to be playing much this year. So I think he could be potentially forcing out a move from what it looks like. Sanderberg is pretty much all but confirmed as gone to Fulham for £25 million or £20 million plus also five mil add-ons. Uh, Masengo has also got some links to Otser over in France and Trafford will always have links over to the likes of Newcastle and that's just in the last 24 hours. Now that's a lot to handle in 24 hours and of course the response on social media is exactly what you would expect. Now realistically if you're telling me I know somebody in Vegos is probably going as well, actually. I forgot to mention that. Vegos is also probably going. I don't know how Trezor's like, escaping all of this. I don't even know what's happening. Apparently, he's ill, but like just nothing even seen with him in any social media. Nothing at all. It's, it's kind of a strange one, that is. But, yeah, it looks like Vegos could also be going to Ajax too. It looks like that could be also happening. So, yeah, it's a lot to take that because, you know, we have got a very big squad. Some players have to go, of course. And it looks like it, there's a lot of players going on at once, which begs the question that we've got to be replacing some of them. Now, it looks like some players involved, like likes of Joe Wall from Nottingham Forest. Um, Humphreys, um, I forgot, Reese Humphreys, I believe is his name. He is a, a, a young centre-half from Chelsea who's coming in, I believe, confirmed, actually. Maybe announced today as I do this video um, from Chelsea. He was on loan to Swansea City last campaign, and he, he's there on loan with a mandatory buy fee, probably around 
maybe five million quid, for example. Hannah Ball has also been linked, the Manchester United youth player. Um, Vetro, who is a Bordeaux player, of course, they're no, no longer um, really a club now, Bordeaux. But so at, uh, I forgot his first name, but Vetro is his name, is a winger. And as of the last 10, 15 minutes, there's been some conversations online about a Jeremy Sarmiento, who's, of course, a Brighton young player that spent last year on loan at Ipswich Town. And I believe a bid has been put in for him, and there is a lot of interest onto that lad. So, again, this is all information in the last 24 hours. So, you taking all that information as much as you want. Now, <laughs> the issue, the, this is the thing, like, I get why people would panic, but the reality is, other than O'Shea and Vitinho, none of these players have even played for us this campaign. Trafford, we all kind of expected would we'll probably go. Berg, we all probably thought would probably go as long as we're sufficiently paid. O'Shea, probably less so. We may think he would go. Um, it looks like Wolverhampton Wanderers really wants him um, as long alongside Brentford as well, but I think Wolves are really pressing in onto him now. But, you know, we still got a lot of centre half, so it's like, okay, would we still be okay? And I think we would, because most of these players haven't really played. Now, O'Shea and Osteva has built quite a decent little duo at the back, so I kind of feel like that's risky to get rid of. However, if Bay is still here, if you bring in that Joe Worrell lad, if Humphreys is all right, I mean, if I duck your goals, there's still Ekdal, Christ, there's still Del De Quar here, he's still here. There's still CJ Egan Riley here, he's not even gone on loan either, it's just... There's so many players. There really is. So, by no means, I think we can panic just yet because you need to really look at what's happening by the end of the window because if these, if these players go, but we, we replaced them with the likes of a Joe Rowe and a um, Jeremy Sarmiento, this Humphreys lad from Chelsea, and maybe one or two others, then you may say, okay, well, we, we expect a bit of a clean out here. You know, some players may not, be getting the game done that they wanted, like the likes of Emmanuel Benson or Anna Sarori, and they may need to go. So, yeah, maybe it, it, it is really, it's really wishful thinking. Maybe it is, maybe it is. But from what I've seen, the team that we've played, other than uh, O'Shea, and I guess you could say Vitinho as well, that we've looked pretty good. We've looked pretty good. And so if all the players go, I still think we'll have some good players there. Now, the issue is... If we are looking at the likes of Ezekiel Amdouni going as well, then that's when I may have some more concerns. Because for me, it's now imperative that we keep Ezekiel Amdouni. It is absolutely vital that we keep Ezekiel Amdouni now, as far as I'm concerned. And we need another centre mid in there, maybe two now. You know, if Berger's gone, then we're going to... Ha- and Masengo could be going as well. I mean, it's not confirmed with Masengo, but we need a centre mid in there now. Who that could be? Uh, there's that Walter Berger from Stoke City that looks like he's got some interest, but I mean it's not really that hard just to go to the Premier League and ask a club or two for some loan players. We that did ha- that went quite well for us last year. However, the issue is if we do well, can we bring them back with us if we do go up? That is always a bit of a risky play. So yeah, I, that's kind of the update right now. Uh, we are looking ahead towards the weekend, and we've got Sunderland away from home, which. Sunderland, no matter how good or bad they are, is always a tough game to go to. And prior to us beating them 4-2 to uh, the last campaign in the championship, I think that was our first win away in uh, countless years. So it's always a tough place to go. They have just beat Sheffield Wednesday 4-0 and a bit of, what I guess we can say, a shock result. They're going to be well up for it. But they've still got quite a young team. Still a team which looks like it has got a bit of inexperience in there. And it feels like it's still going to, we can go and get the win. And there's going to be a lot of noise coming into this weekend if a couple players do go out before that game just kick off. So this could be a very vital match for us, especially as well as we're playing Blackburn, of course, up next. There is also Wolves midweek in a EFL Cup and... I, I, I have no idea what to expect for that game, really. It's such a boring draw, Premier League team away from home. Just give us, like, Barrow or something. So, I'm sure this will be spoke about by by Joe on, on, on the Roundup video. There's lots to go through. This is a very important week for us. And I ain't going to make a complete judgment yet until I see how we end up in the end of it. Because we kind of knew some players would be going... It just feels a lot right now because it's so much at once. 
So all I can suggest is to hold your nerve and we'll see where we are by the time the window shuts, which is conveniently straight after we beat Blackburn. Look, if we get a draw away at Sunderland and we go beat Blackburn and we look like our squad's pretty good, then we'll be looking back thinking, what have we worried about? Maybe that is also wishful thinking, you tell me. But enjoy your day and up the clarets. See ya.